An IBM computer system named Watson won Jeopardy. But the real winner? Humankind. Life is really about questions and answers. This technology can help us get some of those answers. We're going to revolutionize many, many fields with this new capability. Healthcare, government, finance, anywhere decision-making depends on deeper understanding of the huge wealth of information that's out there. I thought the game was the end. I'm realizing it's just the beginning. That's what I'm working on. I'm an IBMer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome General Manager, Watson Solutions, Manoj Saxena. Good morning. It's my pleasure to be here with you this morning uh, to talk about some of the potentials that uh, Frank referred to and what you saw in the, in the video about what can Watson do. Uh, I'm going to spend the time, uh, the next 15 minutes or so, talking about three things. Uh, I'm going to talk about how Watson is leveraging big data to do the kinds of things that uh, we are planning it um, to do for specific industries. And then I'll uh, move forward and spend a little bit of time in healthcare and give you a feel for a couple of um, scenarios where we are putting Watson to work. And then I'll finally end up with talking about some potential applications of Watson and our plans for Watson uh, going forward. Uh, before I do that, let's take a quick look back at the history of Watson. Uh, Watson started off the, the technology program in IBM Research in approximately 2006. It is part of what IBM Research takes on once in a few decades. We call it the Grand Challenge. The last Grand Challenge was Deep Blue, the, the chess-playing supercomputer that beat uh, Gary Kasparov. And uh, IBM Watson then, uh, the research team then took on the next project, which is to compete with Jeopardy. And uh, that's what you saw in February when we took on the two winningest champions in Jeopardy and were able to uh, compete successfully against it. Based on that demonstration, earlier this year in August, uh, IBM Software Group announced the creation of a new division uh, for commercializing Watson-based solutions, of which I was named the general manager uh, two months ago. And we have selected healthcare as the first market to go after and start putting Watson to work. And clearly, that's the beginning of uh, other solutions that we plan to take forward, uh, solutions in areas like financial services and others that I'll give you a, a preview on. So when we started looking at where do we start with Watson, where do we start applying Watson, we obviously started looking at areas or industries which were what I call as information intensive. Uh, industries where the volume, variety, and velocity of data was changing fast and where businesses were not able to cope up with it. And I came across some statistics that were frankly stunning. Uh, I, I found out that 90% of the world's data was created in the last two years alone. Okay? And 80% of that 90% did not or does not exist in structured formats. These are unstructured data. These are blog entries. These are physicians' notes. These are product reviews on Amazon.com. These are tweets. And most of the IT systems that we have built over the last five decades are built to handle structured data. Uh, they don't have the capacity and the capability to combine structured and unstructured data effectively and help make better decisions. And as you can imagine, as a result of this, uh, businesses, you heard this from Frank earlier, are struggling with how do we manage and how do we use this information. Uh, one out of two business leaders said that they don't have access to information uh, while they're making critical decisions. Uh, someone, someone said to me um, uh, a statement which I think captures the problem. They said, businesses are dying of thirst in an ocean of salt water. Okay? So on one hand, I have all this data and information, yet I'm dying of thirst. So in a way, I was explaining this to my kids, you know, Washington's sort of like a, a desalinization plant or at least how we are trying to position it to start uh, you know, solving specific problems, an industry and a business process at a time. Um, why healthcare? Um, one of the things that stood out immediately uh, amongst these information-intensive industries, industries such as insurance, healthcare, banking, telecom, in industries where information liquidity is key to driving business performance, uh, there were some statistics that in healthcare that just blew me away. Um, number one, Medical information is doubling every five years. So just imagine that. If you go into medical school, and by the time you've graduated, the amount that you learned has already been doubled. Okay? And doctors have said that about five hours a month is all they spend reading medical journals. I don't know about you, 
but next time I go into a doctor's office, that's not going to make me feel very comfortable. And, and also a statement that only about 20% of the treatments that are given are evidence-based, right? So pretty scary stuff, you know, stuff that impacts societies and all of our lives. And as you can imagine, as a result, there are significant implications. Um, a fully one out of five diagnoses that are done in this country are estimated to be, estimated to be incomplete or inaccurate. One out of five, okay? Um, one and a half million errors is what are estimated around the way medication is prescribed and delivered in the U.S. today. Again, significant, uh, significant issue. And, uh, and, and, the, and the biggest of all, between 44,000 to 98,000 people die every year because of preventable medical errors in hospitals alone. So when you talk about Smarter Planet, when you talk about improving the societies in which we learn, there's no better place to start than healthcare. It's not an easy domain, uh, and I'll talk to you about how we are going about solving it, but it's one that we chose to start putting Watson to work at. So as, as we started looking at it and say, okay, how do we then take this jeopardy playing machine and make that into an enterprise class business, business system that's going to solve these problems? And we asked ourselves the simple question, what if businesses had all the answers that they needed to thrive? So imagine, for the case of healthcare, a Jeopardy board that instead of eight columns runs into thousands of columns, and instead of those six rows has you know, hundreds of rows in it. There are 12,000 diseases that are known to mankind, and clearly the knowledge of information about it, the categories as well as the depth around it is pretty immense. And given Watson's capability to process 200 million textbooks in three seconds, okay, that's kind of the hardware and the optimized architecture underneath it, uh, you talk about big data, that's your big data in action there. So we said, let's take these industries where they have this problem of delivering complex information in context and start applying Watson to it, right? And uh, this is where, again, start visually Im imagining these Jeopardy boards for, you know, healthcare or insurance or, or retail or, or geology or whatever you may. And uh, let me again speak to you a little bit about how now Watson works and how it does what it does. So the fundamental question is, you know, computing has been around for 50 years now, at least. Why is it so hard for computers to do this? Why is it so hard for computers to take all this unstructured data and process it? The problem is in the way systems are designed. One of the things I say sort of half-jokingly is once Watson is commercialized, we'll draw a line in computing and say, before this time, computing was nothing but a giant calculator, okay? It was all deterministic stuff and was crunching through data. After Watson, You'll be able to do that, plus you're able to understand the meaning. You're, under, you're able to create a learning system that understands human language, the semantics and the syntactics of it, and is able to provide information to make better decisions. So here's an example. Um, the, the question was, where was Einstein born? In traditional systems, unless we have that information stored, as a physicist was Einstein and his birthplace was Ulm, um, you know, that query is pretty brittle for your traditional data warehouses. However, given Watson's capability to understand human language at massive scale and speed through the, uh, the, the connections that it makes, it can take a sentence like uh, what you see on the right here and make the deduction that Einstein was actually born in Elm. Okay, A very powerful thing. I'll give you a, a statistic on that. We took Wikipedia when we were playing Jeopardy, it was not connected to the internet, by the way, when we played Jeopardy, they were told it has to be a standalone machine. We took Wikipedia, put that into Watson, it was about seven gigabytes. By the time Watson got processing through that information and understanding the meaning, it was roughly 44 gigabytes of what it created out of Wikipedia. So this is that reasoning and learning that it goes through and stores it in the system, then that gets applied in, in context. Here's another question on uh, you know, GE and Jack Welch. Again, unless you have that in a structured database, this notion of creating um, ontologies and, and semantic understanding. So what you're seeing here is basically a shift from a deterministic application to a probabilistic application, something that processes and says, I think there is a confidence level of 90% that GE ran, was, was run by Jack Welch in this time. By the way, I used that deterministic versus probabilistic line with my teenager, and she said, yeah, dad, that's very clear and don't ever say that in front of my friends. So, um, so I, I have to come up with a better term for exactly what is the new class of business solution that Watson comes about. But let's take a look at how Watson works, right? 
the three simple things it does. I mean, very powerful from a technology point of view, but in, in terms of what it goes through, number one, it understands natural language in human speech, okay? It understands how sentences are formed, how verbs are formed. It understands puns. It understands uh, metaphors, similes. Very powerful capability that the IBM research team came up with over the four-year period. Then, based on that understanding, it generates a hypothesis. It generates uh, an answer panel that you saw in Jeopardy that says, I believe the first answer could be this or this or this with a probability around it, okay? And once the user selects a particular pathway, it understands and learns from how that system is being used. All of this is built on the massively parallel probabilistic architecture. Once I got slammed on that deterministic to probabilistic, I never used that architecture term with my daughter. But, but that is a pretty cool piece of technology underneath it that, that powers Watson. So let's now um, take a look at uh, a healthcare example and how this might come together. We here have a case of a 58-year-old woman and who comes in complaining of dizziness, anorexia, dry mouth, you know, and it kind of gets entered into a medical record. And what the system does then is start, it starts extracting the national language from it and says, okay, given that she's having difficulty swallowing, given that she's got fever and dry mouth, it seems like these could be the potential diagnosis models where it could be a case of you know, influenza, it could be diabetes, UTI. So based on that first piece of information in the medical record, Watson's beginning to say, these could be some potential conditions and this level of confidence. Okay, so it starts off with influenza first. Then you start adding on top of that the family history. Then you say, this particular lady's um, family history has that her a mother had you know, a cancer in the past, a bladder cancer. They had Graves' disease in the family. And then Watson starts adding that and says, you know, when I overlay that, it seems like to me that it looks more like diabetes. Then on top of it, you add another piece of information saying, here's the history. Here's what's happened with her in the last four years. When she came in, these were the kinds of treatments that were given to her over the last few years. And, and then Watson looks at it and says, you know what? Based on what I'm learning now from the symptoms, from the family history and the patient history, I don't think it's diabetes or influenza. Seems to me it could be UTI, okay? And then last but not the least, we start adding on top of it medications. Okay, what are the medications that have been prescribed and, and what has been the impact of it? Then Watson looks at all the medical journals, looks at the patient records, and says, you know, based on all of this stuff and the test data, I believe with a fair degree of confidence that UTI is what she is going with, and that is the assistance that is provided at a pretty fast pace to the doctor or the nurse who is administering that patient. So pretty powerful stuff in how unstructured data and big data is pulled together uh, in context of a physician's or a nurse's work stream and starts helping as, I call it like a car navigation system for doctors, okay? It's, it's a tool, it's an assistant that's helping you drive through. Watson's not making the decisions, okay? Watson's helping, it's, being an assist, it's just like you use a textbook, now you've got a very fancy and a powerful textbook on a smartphone or an iPad or, or whatever context. So, you know, tremendous possibilities, tremendous excitement, but we are approaching this both with an equal measure of excitement and humility. It's one thing to have a Jeopardy playing machine that can be, beat the, the champions. It's another thing to come up with telco-grade business solutions that are domain-specific. And uh, while we have a lot of talented people in IBM, one of the things that we do know is the best innovation is the one that comes about while partnering with your customers. So earlier in August, we announced a partnership with WellPoint uh, where we went about building the first pilot solution for uh, WellPoint in, in healthcare. And let me give you kind of a quick story of what kinds of things they're looking for. This is around the notion of admissions and approval management and authorizations. So imagine I, I call in to WellPoint. Uh, by the way, WellPoint is the nation's largest insurance company. They insure 34 million customers. One out of nine Americans is covered by them, and they operate in 14 different states. So imagine I call in, I mean, I, I call into, you know, it's October, I call into my hospital or my clinic, and I say, I wanna come see you guys. I think I'm coming down with fever, it feels like flu, okay? What that uh, clinic does is takes that information, feeds it into um, the insurance company to say, give us a, a, a approval for this treatment. Watson then takes that information, matches up with the insurance company's records of my past treatments, and finds out that uh, in the last three years, around this time, 
is that he keeps coming in complaining of fever and flu-like symptoms, but in the past tests that we did, we found out it was allergy to ragweed, okay? And then it says, oh, by the way, through my other database of medical records and uh, newspaper articles, we know that in central Texas, this time around the year, there was a big outbreak of ragweed. So you may want to look for not just flu, but also allergies as you're providing this treatment to him. So that's sort of you know, a simplified version of how WellPoint is planning to use in the first pilot, uh, Watson, to help improve diagnosis and, and patient approvals. And we're very thrilled and to have a company of that caliber partnering with us. A um, few more things and we'll wrap up. So as you could see, I mean, tremendous amount of um, information that's being pulled together in context and being applied. So it's a combination of big data and combination of analytics being applied in these industry cartridges, as I call it healthcare, financial services, so on and so forth. And um, as we fast forward this, there is a variety of industries you know, um, that, that we believe Watson can be applied. Uh, financial services, if you're a bond trader and you have to go through volumes of data on treasuries and municipal bonds and others, um, every call center could potentially have Watson. Uh, in fact, uh, recently one of the reporters asked me and said, you know, my editor wants to know if she could date Watson. Okay, now I've heard a lot of questions about applications of Watson. And I said, I don't know if you can date Watson, but I can certainly maybe get Watson to choose the right partner for you, okay? So, so again, multiple, multiple opportunities, and one of our uh, challenges in the years ahead is going to be disciplined execution around picking the right customers, picking the right industries, and, and taking this work. So uh, we are going to be announcing some interesting programs next year around not just in industries, but also how we plan to take this forward with the universities and uh, collaborate with universities worldwide to uh, take the Watson technology forward. Uh, I hope you follow us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, SlideShare and all that good stuff. And um, we'll keep you updated on uh, how and where we are putting Watson to work. I want to thank you for your time this morning and wish you a great uh, day and a great rest of the conference. Thank you.